Okay, so hello everyone, and today uh, we'll speak about the uh, cloud infrastructure, about how uh, we can set it up without uh, a spe very special knowledge or very, uh, I would say, distinguished skills, uh, because it's not so hard actually, uh, and I think everyone can do it. Uh, but uh, to start with, um, we uh, need to know what is a, a thing that's called infrastructure as a service. Basically, um, there's a thing that you probably know, it's software as a service. Uh, it's basically something like the Office web, web Apps or the Google Docs. It's basically application running in your browser without requirement to download it and to install it. And uh, basically user, so uh, the people who are like using this application have access only to this application and cannot change or modify the hardware side of it. So you cannot like, let's say, go to Google Docs and specify that you want to run this application on its machine. That's not doable because that's a limitation of software as a service. The extension of software as a service is basically a platform as a service. So the platform as a service is a situation uh, where you have access to the uh, OS of the machine, to the applications running on it. Uh, so it's basically, I would call it a virtualized, um, a virtual machine basically that's running on the cloud and you can access it uh, either from a browser or from, from a specify. Uh, a special client or from a special interface. It gives you basically the control over the operation system and all the applications running on it. The example of it is Windows Azure. Uh, it's not Microsoft Azure, it's Windows Azure that is part of Microsoft Azure. It's basically cloud version of Windows. And the thing we are gonna talk uh, about today is infrastructure as a service. And uh, that's a situation where you can change your operation system, you can change your, I don't know, uh, maybe kernel, you can change your network configuration, so you have basically control over your uh, infrastructure on the, I would call it a hardware side, because uh, changing networking uh, isn't, uh, isn't uh, only about the, I don't know, changing IP or MAC address, it's uh, about changing the uh, DNS, about changing the uh, routing. So it's it's not exactly on the same machine. So you have control over uh, several machines. You can uh, customize it. You can uh, create it, delete it. Uh, so basically, uh, from left to right, uh, every single uh, service basically in the, on this slide is extending. Uh, the one on its left side. So platform as a service is extension of software as a service and infrastructure as a service is extension of the platform as a service. And uh, what I, wh why I'm telling uh, this to you is uh, in order to be able to set up our cloud infrastructure, uh, we need to have control over the infrastructure as a service. Um, basically, uh, I would call this platform, but it's not really a platform. Uh, for example, uh, we need to have control over the networking, as I said before, because it's, I would say, a crucial when creating a cloud infrastructure. So we can do it on platform as a service because it's over it. Uh, so that's basically a brief look at what it is. It's not everything, but I think it should be enough for this presentation uh, and as i said we can only do this uh, custom cloud infrastructure on infrastructure as a service and basically what is a cdk a cdk uh, you probably don't hear this term uh, often but you probably often hear the term sdk which is basically a software development kit so cdk is nothing more than a cloud development kit so it means that it's a tool that, that uh, makes you able to create, change, modify elements of the cloud infrastructure. Okay, and 
why should we exactly use it? The first thing uh, is it's easier to understand for developers. Um, by easier, I mean you are not writing some special YAML or JSON configuration. You are just writing in your native programming language uh, as it's specified uh, underneath. It's TypeScript, J Java, C Sharp, or Python at the moment. I, I think F Sharp also. Uh, and it basically uh, doesn't make you to learn new things. You can just use uh, the knowledge that you already have and create something new with it. Uh, the second thing is Express Cloud architecture designed from scratch. So basically you can have empty AWS account with nothing on it, uh, only with IAM keys. Uh, I'm gonna talk uh, about it in the live coding session. Uh, so you have empty cloud and after the execution of your code, after the deploy, you've got basically production ready infrastructure. It's unit testable, which is uh, basically a final thing because you can unit test a uh, configuration of your machines. Uh, so that's not an usual thing. Uh, and it's actually quite easy because uh, it's using a custom framework from AWS and it's working quite well. Uh, it auto wires the permissions of, and policies for us. Uh, so that's a huge plus in terms of how much code, code we need to uh, type. It's basically about 20%, sometimes even 10% uh, of the code. Um, and it's certainly less code than AWS code formation, which is basically a service from AWS that I would call it it's a father of CDK because it was created in order to allow DevOps to create the infrastructure by the uh, YAML configuration. But it, like, it evolved many times and is right now uh, so complex that basically AWS CDK is a wrapper for that and it's doing nothing more than uh, transpiling the code into the transformation code. Uh, but that's how it works and um, I didn't hear about uh, changes upcoming in CloudFormation so uh, that's sad that the main service is so complicated uh, with, without any purpose but uh, let's say that's how it is. Uh, it, uh, it works in multiple programming languages as I said before it's TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, Python and F sharp, as far as I remember. Uh, it has single common deploy. You basically type in your console CDK deploy, and all your changes after a confirmation are being deployed to the cloud and everything is ready for, for the production. It has easy uh, diff mechanism that's showing what will be changed, uh, what permissions will be changed, what will be added or removed. That's also a nice feature because uh, you don't need to deploy your code to the uh, cloud in order to check if it's working or not, if it's changing the right things. And even though it's made by AWS, it's open source. And so that's a nice feature because in case something is not working, you can fix it by yourself or create a ticket and someone would fix it. So that's the power of open source. And uh, to compare the CDK on the left with the CloudFormation on the right, here is exactly the same code. As you can see, CDK has 48 lines of code, uh, whereas the CloudFormation has 556 lines of code. So I would say that's quite a difference. <laughs> and it's basically, um, uh, infrastructure for the lambda simple lambda function that is being run, I think, with the US API on the API, API gateway. So it's basically three or four services. It doesn't require you to be sure to write this 500 lines of code, but that's how the uh, cloud formation works, unfortunately. So we need to use uh, CDK in order to in order to be able to write this infrastructure quite quickly. Okay, so before we start, um, uh, it's good to know uh, the main AWS services like the 
uh, Lambda, S3, and maybe some root 53. Uh, I don't know, API gateways, just these basic services. Uh, it's good to know the uh, object-oriented programming basics because uh, for purpose of this presentation, I will use TypeScript because I think it will be understandable for everyone who pr programs in the object-oriented uh, language. And it's good to know the CLI basics and the Unix terminal because we need to use some commands. And what we'll need uh, is AWS CLI. Uh, someone is typing, I think. Mm. Yes, this presentation will be shared by, by email. Uh, I don't see my mouse. OK. Uh, so what we'll need? It's AWS CLI that can be downloaded from the apparently AWS CLI page. Uh, the Node.js uh, with TypeScript because uh, we can use plain JavaScript, but why should we when we can use TypeScript? Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, the AWS CDK CLI that you can apparently download from the AWS CDK CLI page. Uh, the code editor, it can be VS Code or the Vim or the Nano or the Notepad or whatever you are using. Uh, you will need AWS account we can, which can be free for one year if you didn't have it before, or you can use your corporate account, but don't, don't tell anyone. Uh, you also need a Linux or Unix shell or terminal in order to be able to type some commands. You can also use Windows uh, shell, but I didn't test it, but I think it should work. And also the first thing on this is, is Python, because uh, even though we have TypeScript specified in here, I show you that we don't need to use uh, this TypeScript. We can use just Python because we can combine as many languages as we want in the AWS CDK. Okay, so it's time for the live coding. Mm, okay, so the first thing uh, we need to do in order to be able to write in the AWS CDK application is to basically uh, create a folder. That's a nice thing to do. Then go into it. And right now we are using the CDK uh, CLI and we are specifying that the CDK in it and we specify the language. And for purpose of this presentation, I will use the TypeScript because it's my language, but you can use whatever you want to. And what it's doing right now is creating some files, some data, some things for us. And we just need to wait and drink our coffee. Yeah, it should finish right away because it's not so much packages. Yeah, and it's finished. Okay. What can we do right now is to build our application because it's in TypeScript, which is not basically a language. It's a wrapper for the JavaScript. And we can write some, uh, run something called CD, CDK things, synth. And what we, it will do is to, it, it will show us the uh, output code for, for the cloud formation. So maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Uh, the application we have right now has basically nothing in it. And nothing generates uh, this many lines of code in the cloud formation. That's a nice feature. Good to know. OK, so basically, um, maybe let's jump into writing some uh, example applications. So let's create a directory called, I don't know, res and open visual code in here. Okay, and in the rest, let's create a main.js. So we don't need to transpile it one more time. And what, it'll, what this main file will be, it's, it will be basically a handler for the Lambda function. 
on AWS. So we need to import the AWS package. And also we need to create the S3 for that, or we actually don't need to. It will be easier. And export test main equals. Um, let's let's make it just a placeholder so it will be faster. So it's event context in lambda, and it will return just basically. That is called hundred body of it's working and no headers. And this code is basically just a placeholder code for the AWS Lambda that you can read about in AWS Lambda docs apparently. And that should be enough. Let's call it hundred. Easier. Okay. And uh, in the directory that we were in, um, CDK created some folders for us. It's basically a bin folder that's uh, basically containing the binary files that are basically compiled TypeScript. Uh, it contains CDK, CDK out folder, which contains uh, some out files that we will probably never use, but it's using it. Uh, it's got the lib folder that's, I would say, the most important for us because it contains our uh, infrastructure code and also test folder with example test. So we can even test our code, but about that later. Also, we've got something called CDK to JSON. It's basically basic configuration for our CDK and packages and that's basically uh, our packages in Node.js. All right, so uh, in order to create our first uh, infrastructure as a code service, we need to install some more packages because we'll use some more uh, tools from the CDK platform. So we need to install the, uh, let's say, AWS core slash AWS Lambda, because we are using Lambda functions. Also, I would say we need to use API Gateway, which is basically doing everything for our Lambda function. And we need to use AWS CDK, it's also CDK in here. I don't know why it's typed core. CDK, CDK. We also need to use uh, S3 because we need to store our Lambda code somewhere. So let's install these packages. Okay, it's installed. Nice. Uh, all right, so in CDK, we've got uh, this concept of stacks and constructs. What it is, it's basically a stack is a group of constructs and the construct should be basically one service running on your cloud. So if you, for example, have user service that's running, uh, let's say on EC2, uh, and let's say it's a microservice uh, infrastructure that you have on your cloud, then you've got this stack with all of your services for microservice architecture and you've got some constructs uh, that are basically the separate services so let's create a construct maybe um let's call it i don't know lambda service .ts. and let's create a class because it's object-oriented CDK. And we need to import our core from the AWS CDK package. 
we also need, I would say, API Gateway. Also, Lambda function. And also S3. Okay, it's working, no errors. And what we need to do right now is to extend this class with core.construct. By doing that, we are just telling the CTK that it's a construct and we have access to some features of this uh, interface. As you can see, is um, it has to be created in scope of another construct. That's because um, CDK stack also extends the construct, so it is a construct, but it is, I would call it a higher order construct. It's just basically grouping uh, all the other ones. All right, so we need, to construct, we need a constructor and we will basically do everything in this constructor because uh, we, we rather won't have any other methods in this class. In constructor, we need to specify the scope, this construct in which it's being run in, and also an ID that will be a string just to identify this service. We need to call the super function in order to call the uh, parent class constructor that's required. And okay, what we need to do right now when we are creating the um, Lambda application is to create basically a handler because Lambda is on handlers. So just type Lambda. And if I don't know what I want to do, I'm just looking for a certain function, certain class. And as you can see, it's function because Lambda is basing on functions, which are basically the handlers. And the first parameter of it, of this is, oh, and it's new because it's a class. Okay, and the first parameter is scope, so it's this. ID is, I don't know, Lambda handler. The next thing are props, so we need to configure our service. So I'm just clicking control space in order to see the options I need to specify. And I see I specify the code. So I specify this code from the lambda dot code maybe, yeah, it's code. Dot from asset, so I want to use asset folder. So and this asset folder is basically the rest. So it will just take this rest folder, the files from that, and it will create a S3 bucket for that and it will put that code in there so we can use it in our handler. Okay, what's the next, next thing we need to use? Handler, okay, so it's basically, we need to specify which file and which function we need to run. We want to run uh, in our handler, so it will be main.handler for us. Handler, because as you can see, the file is called main and the function is called handler. And the next thing is runtime. So it will be in core, maybe, no, and maybe lambda. Not runtime, yes. And we want to use, as you can see, lambda supports, uh, I would say, a nice amount of languages. Uh, let's say we want to use Node.js uh, 12. And that's it basically. And uh, we've got our handler ready. And it's, it's it will basically work, but we need to wait to call this handler. So we need our API gateway. Let's call it API maybe. So here will be new API gateway. And let's, let's say it'll be a REST API. Again, the scope, which is this. Mm, the ID, I don't know, gateway and the props, which are, uh, we want to use REST API name, so we can identify that. 
gateway. And we can put some description, I don't know. And what we need to do right now, uh, by the way, this code that we have right now will be around two or 300 lines of code in the code formation. And we can actually check that. We can run a camera build. So we can build our TypeScript and we can run CDK Synth. So we can see our cut formation code. Uh, not yet, because we need to go to the to our stack and where it, here it is, and just call our service. Uh, it's this and uh, And let's do it again. Okay, so, uh, so our Earth API doesn't contain any method, uh, methods because we didn't do it yet. So apparently we need to do it right away. So uh, I don't know, I want to add a method for, uh, for my Lambda. So maybe I write, uh, I don't know, Lambda configuration. It will be central for sure the API gateway. Dot and, and looking for what I need to use. Uh, I think it will be Lambda integration. Uh, we need to specify the handler, which is handler. Mm, and options, which will, which we can actually use because we need to use, we can use template. And, and for the application JSON, we can just use the default status code. And what it will do is it will always return the status code if we don't specify otherwise in the code. So that's a nice feature. And I don't know, maybe just API root, root so it will be on the root uh, directory of our routing. And oh, add methods. Okay, it's called like that. That we we'll get mm, without and target will be for integration. And I would say that's it. Let's build again. Okay. Let's call that synthesize in order to see our CDK code. Uh, sorry, the class formation code. And as you can see, it's this much uh, lines of code for basically two services because we didn't use the S3 because I forgot it's being done automatically. Uh, so, okay, when we have our synth, I can build it again because I removed the S3. So, when our synth is passing and not throwing any errors, what we can do is to is we can uh, deploy our app. But there's one thing and that's only for the Lambda applications that we uh, on the first basically um, on the first deploy we need to call CDK Bootstrap and it will create a S3 bucket for our Lambda code. Uh, but it's only once, and then we only need to specify CDK deploy. By the way, we need to have the AWS CLI configured. I mean, we need to have our IAM keys in the, uh, I believe it's in a second. I check that. Yeah, it's the credentials file. So, uh, so <laughs> I won't show it, but you need to put your credentials in there. The documentation on that is on the and WSCLI documentation. And you also need a config file that's basically specifying to which region we want to deploy it. So when I type CDK deploy, uh, it's kindly asking me if I want to make these changes for sure because it will change the um, basically security and policy rules. 
So we can check that uh, we will have CloudWatch role. That's basically a logging for, um, for our Lambda, that's okay. We will have our Lambda handler, that's also okay. And as you can see, here is our construct name and here's our handler name, I mean ID. So it's easily understandable. And yeah, we also have some roles for that. And we've got API Gateway and Lambda Handler. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. So now it's deploying. And right now we basically don't need to do anything. It's automatic. So we can drink our coffee again. And the next feature of that is it's basically a wrapper for the CloudFormation. And it's also using the CloudFormation for the deploy. So what it will do is it will create, create a change set for that. So on each deploy, it won't create everything from scratch. It will just, uh, I would call it, apply changes to our uh, AWS. So we are not removing anything. We are not creating anything if it's not necessary. That's a nice feature, I would call it. As you can see, uh, this lock is basically lock from AWS. Uh, it's creating Lambda handlers, it's creating rows. It's also creating the routing for the API gateway, and it's done. And what it gave us is a link that I can probably click on. And it's giving me a transfer error. But we'll investigate that. Okay, so I go to my AWS console. I need to log in. And let's check. Uh, I wanted the Lambda function. So let's check if we have Lambda function. Yes, we've got something called Lambda service, Lambda handler, because Lambda service was our construct. And Lambda handler, handler was our, uh, basically, uh, handler for the Lambda construct. So it's, I would say, working. It's also specifying the stack that we're using. And the stack is basically the name of our folder in this case. It was DKD123, and it is indeed. Let's go to the CloudWatch and check logs in order to check why it's not working. Mm, do we have any logs? Mm, yes, indeed we have. Okay. Uh, unexpected token export. All right, because I forgot that uh, the code for the uh, Lambda functions, it's quite obsolete, so we need to call sadly exports. Now it should work. So uh, we ch we've changed our handler. What we need to do right now is run the build function, just to be sure that it's uh, up to date, and run the CDK deploy and it will automatically calculate these changes in our code it will calculate what needs to be uh, updated as you can see it detected that our code is updated so it created another bundle uh, and right now it's creating cloud formation change set it will probably change nothing uh, it will just um, upload our code to the s3 and remove the old one and change the lambda Configuration to use the new one, new one. So let's wait a second. And next feature is uh, after every deploy uh, that uses the API gateway, we get this link that's basically our root link, so we can do uh, so we can quickly access our API. So you can, as you can see, it didn't create anything. So there was no create uh, action. We just updated the Lambda function 
and that was basically all. So we've got this link, you can click it. So I can have an error. So let me check that again. What's wrong this time? The exactly same thing. Okay, so let's check where do we have the export. We don't have the export. Okay, and uh, what we can do right now in order to fix it is to go to API Gateway. By the way, we can check if our API Gateway is created. It is, we can see our description. Uh, so we go to this gateway and we see that on get, we've got the Lambda proxy. So it's basically working correctly. It's, I would call it, it's configured correctly. And uh, in here we can test our endpoint. Okay, so the problem is, mm, wait a second, it should return this thing. Why it's not working. Okay, let's check it. So we need um, set of code headers and body, and that's exactly what we have. Mm, maybe let's do it in the absolute way. The async function. And return. Maybe don't I just doesn't like the new JavaScript. And do it again, it should be fast because we only change our code again. As, and as you can see, uh, debugging of your Lambda code is pretty much very, very fast uh, with the CDK. You don't need to go to the uh, AWS UI, uh, click through everything, upload your code, etc., etc. It's everything automatic. We just need to type CTK deploy. Okay, so update is complete. Now we only need to, yeah, it's fine. And it's working. We have a success. Apparently, Lambda function doesn't like the new JavaScript. Uh, but let's say that we've got our client that's uh, telling us that we want to have another endpoint. Uh, how fast can that be? Okay, so we create main to the JS. Uh, we import the end of the SDK, sorry, SDK, yeah, indeed, and function with the, it was event and context, return, Let's say it'll be the one right now. Let's say it'll have again no headers and body it will be JSON stringify working. Sure. Okay, so now we need to uh, add another integration to our stack uh, and we need to add another hunter. So handler two will be basically from main two. It will be also handler because we call it a handler. Yes, indeed. And this AWS, by the way, in here is only for scoping. It's not used, but uh, it has to be in here. Uh, like in React, you need to have React everywhere you use JLX. 
Okay, so handler two is uh, from this folder. It's main two dot handler. It's using Node.js. It will be done handler two. Okay, um, gateway gateway will be only one, and lambda integration two will be for the handler two. Okay, so now let's add Miso to the host, and then we use lambda integration two. Bam, done. <laughs> we can deploy it. We are run build by the way we can check our code uh, our cloud formation code in order to see how much of it is there right now so as you can see it's <laughs> quite a lot i think it's about five or six hundred lines uh syndicated cloud i'll need not this one I need you know, the rest client because it's post. And let's check. Uh, lambda hundred two, lambda hundred two, and lambda hundred two. Okay, that's great. Do it for me. Okay. So now it might it may take a bit longer because you need to calculate the change set and it need to realize that you want to create another lambda under. So as you can see, it created uh, IAM rows for this lambda. It's required in order uh, to. I would say Lambda cannot have access to our AWS without IAM because IAM is basically <laughs> the credentials manager for AWS, I would call it. Uh, so when we have Lambda and some other services like, I don't know, API Gateway, we need to have this IAM role. It also created um, Lambda function. That's basically what we need. It created API Gateway. Uh, but only a method, not the whole REST API. And yeah, that's basically it. We can take that link. So our get should be still working. It's working. But our post should uh, return to one, which it is returning, and should return working true. Okay, but now I realize that I have only a free AWS account and for that uh, if it will be running for two years because I forgot about it, I'll pay $10,000. So what do I do? Okay, it's right. It's basically removing everything for, from our AWS account that was created by this stack. Yes, I want to delete this stack. So basically after that operation, if we didn't do anything else from outside this and stack, uh, our AWS account should be clear. So we won't be charged for anything. And I think that's a very great thing for the development process. As you can see, basically every single service is deleted. Of course, our, our code will not be touched. It's only for the uh, AWS platform. And the few words about the testing. It's basically using the assert library from the AWS CDK. And it's like every, every other unit testing. I won't talk much about it because it's pretty straight, straightforward in order to see uh, some matchers or some, uh, I would call it conditions. Uh, you can just check the CDK documentation. It's very well written. So I think uh, it'll be very easy for you to um, get to know it. Oh, one more thing. What, what, what I require uh, to um, have uh, Python knowledge for this presentation, and basically main.py, main, 
text and I don't know print error. And now we've got a lambda handler in Python and B running correctly. Uh, let's say, uh, and here we'll change it to Python 3.8. So we'll call name.pi.handler. So let's call it handler. And it's done. It, it'll basically just work. Uh, it'll print this to the CloudWatch console. So we can use any language we want for our Lambda, and it's it doesn't uh, need to be the same language as for our infrastructure. That's all. Uh, waiting for the questions. Can you use the cloud formation templates also with the CDK? Uh, I mean, yes, of course. Have already uh, yes. infrastructure. There's an option to just import your uh, old uh, cloud formation uh, code into the CDK, but where if you've used your cloud formation on your AWS account um, before, it will still be on your AWS account. So uh, CDK is basically using uh, this, so it will check uh, when creating the change set, it will just see your uh, old cloud formation and it will create a change set based on that. So if you create, uh, if you check, modify something on CDK and it was already on the cloud formation, it will be on, it'll only be modified, not created. Okay, and delete it when you destroy everything. Sorry? And delete it when you destroy everything. Uh, yes, because when you destroy stack, you just destroy the cloud formation stack, uh, to be honest. So it's the same command, basically. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so any other questions? Uh, is there CDK for Python or is only Node.js? Yes, you can just specify, uh, you, you can do it actually, because you, uh, I don't know, on this one, uh, this one, we just specify CDK in it, language Python, and now it's in Python. It's creating virtual and for you. Not this one. Else. Cut up to pi. Uh, so, as you can see, it has this uh, main file that's basically basically your stack. And in this folder, you've got your stack uh, itself. I mean, it's construct. I don't know why it's called a stack, but we can check that it's. Basically, a Python file that has nothing in it. But there's also a documentation for that, so it will be like very simple for you. Okay, okay so anyone else? It was great, thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so pretty, pretty much fast. Uh, we will need to watch uh, recording to straight reproduce. Oh, sorry for, be, for being fast, but I'm <laughs> thinking I'm not gonna make it in the time that I do. Yeah, it's understandable. Just uh, I think not all who uh, who, do, who don't have enough experience with uh, AWS okay. uh, was yeah. able to follow. But uh, anyway, we, yeah, we it's re recorded. So if you, yeah, if you don't we'll know uh, any term, you can just. I, I don't know, it's, uh, rewind to, uh, to that and check this term in Google. But I think it, was, it wasn't so much comple so complex. It, it could be complex for someone who didn't work with AWS before. Yeah. Thank you, anyway. Okay. The code can run, I think, Lambdas in AWS, so you can debug and, uh, them locally. Uh, yes, there is actually a, a package for the Lambda uh, called uh, Lambda something local, I think, or is it maybe AWS SDK local, something like that. And you can run Lambdas uh, on your machine or you can use the serverless uh, framework and it's also providing that. 
Okay, thank you. Or you can basically just run these files uh, like a regular file because it's just a function, so you can call it, and that will be no problem. Okay, uh, any more questions, or is that all? Uh, I hope that I learned you something. <laughs> um, if you didn't understand a thing, uh, then you can watch this uh, in the video form because it's recorded. Uh, and basically, uh, search for the terms. And the presentation will be also shared uh, on the confluence of SOSERV. Uh, it's actually in. Apple Keynote, but I export it as PDF so everyone can check. So I think.